And it's time, just two days away from Augusta National. The Masters is right around the corner. So here are some storylines to watch out for. Rory McIlroy looking to complete his Grand Slam, still missing that Masters championship. He sits at 11 to 1 to win. And Scotty Scheffler, the run that he is on, the shortest favorite in the field at plus 450, the lowest odds since Tiger Woods back in 20. 13 was plus 350 in 2013 at Augusta and then Tiger of course we have to talk about him the longest odds of his entire career to win the Masters the only tournament he's played in this season has been the Genesis where he withdrew in the second round he did not complete the Masters in 2023 after making that cut and with that we welcome in Spencer Aguiar talking Masters we talked last week about uh you know just everything in general leading up to well, you know, what you were looking out for leading up to the Masters. Now, I do want to ask you, we saw Scotty Scheffler. He is playing the best ball or golf of his career right now. Two wins in the last three tournaments he's played in, including a top two. Uh, I'm curious how you look to bet him, right? He's the outright favorite. He's been incredible of late. Probably the best ball striker we've seen since prime Tiger Woods. Are you looking to bet him at all? Can Can you get behind such a small price? I mean, I will say this, Charlie, I think it's a warranted price, but it's one of those tricky situations where markets have removed a lot of that potential exposure against Scotty Shuffler. They're not listing him at, you know, quote unquote, what a model would indicate is a reasonable price with it. Um, there are so many weeks where th like they continue to fall victim over and over again to top five after top five finish. And I think when that happens, at some point, you have to remove the exposure from the mix that you're getting with him. Like, my model has him as the projected favorite in all areas of the market. Um, I argue that any of the factual value comes in the sectors probably where you can oppose him just because markets have moved on in such a massive contrast from where it should be with it. Um, I'm not going to go that route because, as I said at the beginning, I do think this is warranted where Scotty is the best player in the world. And... You don't have to look any further than the ball striking returns that he's putting together. There's a lot of players historically. Um, Jordan Spieth would be a prime example of that, where my model never necessarily was in love with some of the production totals that he was putting together. And it was expecting this regression to take place. That's like the prime version of Spieth there. Scheffler for three years now, even before this onslaught that we got of victories where he started winning, it was propelling him up my sheet as the best player in the world. And once the wind started rolling in, they haven't stopped. And these top five finishes have just gone onwards every single week with it. So uh, I'm hoping he doesn't beat my outright card, Charlie. That's one of those spots where I'm going to sit back and I I'm going to hope for the best in that area. But he's the most dangerous person in the world right now in the world of golf. Yeah, the last few years, he won the 2022 Masters, finished top 10 last season. Only probably going to go up from that top 10 entering this year, given the form that he's in. But let's play a little game here. We're going to go mild, medium, spicy with the Masters. We got to talk about everything from, you know, the short ends of the sticks to the long shots. Give me your favorite mild bet when it comes to an outright winner in this field. So the very first outright ticket that I placed this week was on Xander Shoffley at 22 to 1. That number has moved since then into that 16 to 18 to 1 range since reopening on Monday. I still argue that there's still value to be had in that price. Charlie, I know what I'm signing up for when it comes to my outright card this week. Like the public disdain is going to turn a wager like Xander into one of those. I told you so rebuttals. If he ends up failing, it is much easier to punch a ticket on a reduced price name um, that has maybe won a major championship, won a masters, and you're paying that tax with that built in part already into the mix there. There's probably five or 10 names that we could directly name when given that answer, but people I have noticed historically, and I think this is why books do it, are more willing to overpay and feel okay doing so if it doesn't work out than get caught in one of these webs by looking bad by going against the perceived grain. Like, I get all of that, but that's also how value comes into play. And that's what I saw this week inside of my model with Shoffley. He placed first for proximity over 200 yards in 2024. He was also inside of all of these additional categories. Proximity from 150 to 175 yards over a two-year running perspective. Perspective with that, expected par three and par four scoring, weighted scrambling, and then the projected strokes gain total. All of those returns, we talked about how great Scotty Scheffler has been. 
all of those returns placed ahead of Scotty Scheffler here. So I get the risk. We're talking about a golfer hasn't won on the PGA Tour since July of 2022, but I'm going to go into that PGA Tour leading 42 consecutive made cuts. He has those three top five finishes over his last four events. I really believe this tells an entirely different story than the market opened at here. And, and I think there's rhyme and reason behind why this has been one of the sharper moves down the board more into the 16 to one range. Now let's move to uh, the long shots here, the spices. And I would be remiss if I interrupted you, didn't allow you to give your spicy pick yet and talk about tiger woods, because I think everyone that is a golf fan is going to sit on their couch and they're going to watch tiger. He's going to be in the featured group everywhere you look. And right now, it's his longest odds he's ever had to win a major. I'm just curious your thoughts in general on attacking him. Is it is there any way to, or is it just one of those sit down, watch TV, root on for maybe a miracle to happen, and Tiger to make a run? I would enjoy Tiger Woods playing professional golf tournaments at the biggest stage. I, I will say nobody understands the nuances of Augusta National better than he does. I think for me, though, the biggest worry comes into play. And we saw this happen last year. There's always the potential that he makes the cut and he's forced to withdraw because of injury or whatever pops up. My model thought he was going to make the weekend. I, I, there's always that potential that you can bet him to make the weekend if you want to have some exposure to him. But uh, for me, it's kind of like I think we get a made cut out of him. We've gotten that historically and what the actual upside is from there is probably capped and what the actual performance will be is probably anybody's guess. Like he's not playing enough golf for where I would feel comfortable with him in contention. If he, if he gets into contention over the weekend, I know we're talking about like women's college basketball and Iowa and, and all this stuff with Caitlin Clark, where you're getting all the ratings there. Tiger will do the same thing for golf that Caitlin Clark has done for women's uh, college basketball or women's basketball in general. So I am hoping that Tiger is in contention. It makes for, must see TV when it happens. I just don't know where the health is. It's kind of one of those question games there where there's no real answer. Right. You mentioned last year he made the cut, then had to withdraw on the next day. And this past season, he's just had one start that was Genesis and he had to withdraw as well. So the health is always a concern with Tiger Woods. But you do have a guy that you're looking to play in this 150 to 200 to one range as far as maybe even a placement finish. Let me know who it is. Yeah, Harris English, 175 to one. You kind of noted it best. I think this is probably best suited to be played as a top 20, more in that plus 345 range. So I write an article every year. It's called the seven deadly sins. It, it essentially takes the seven things that you can't do at Augusta if you want to capture the green jacket. And then it narrows down the field to around seven to 10 players every single year that I run it. So uh, I've published that article for five years so far. It has gone five for five incorrectly, narrowing down the list. You're going to get all those expected players here. Scotty Scheffler, John Rahm, Rory McIlroy, Xander Shoffley. That's one of the reasons why I'm so high on him. But there was only one name that creeped onto that list outside of 100 to 1 on this board, and that was Harris English. I know the Valeris Texas Open worried some people last week after he, re he provided a miscut performance, lost 4.3 strokes ball striking, but... I always talk about this, Charlie, and I think it comes into play here. When you get over corrections to the market because of a one-off result, and I know the course history doesn't necessarily push you in that area for people to want to bet Harris English also, I think we just have a reduced price tier or a heightened price here where there is real ability to get exposure to him. Four top 21 finishes before that blip on the radar in Texas. He's averaged 3.35 shots tee to green during those starts. We're also going to get this short game mastery from within his profile. He was a top 10 producer for me and expected short game metrics against the field. I also think there's something to be said. He's been playing Augusta since 2014. There's been four appearances there. He's never gotten the play in back-to-back -back years. This is the first time that he actually gets a chance to build off of what he did last season. Maybe that familiarity with him will help a little bit. I like Harris English this week as a placement bet, and maybe we can even work this a little bit further up the board into top tens and potential win equity if we really want to take a long shot here.
plus 345 to finish inside the top 20 at bet365 that sounds like money to me i love taking those long shots and i think that everything you said kind of makes sense here and especially the familiarity i think that that definitely will loom large for a guy that you know you need consistency on, on any course in general just knowing the knowledge of everything and, and the greens i've been watching videos on just how crazy they are the up downs just you know, you need to have a sense of familiarity. You need to learn each hole uh, just by experience played. So that's your mild, medium, and spicy. I can't let you go, though, without your best bet in general. So you're, you know, taming back a little bit, going with a matchup. You've been money at those in the past. What do you got for me? You know, Charlie, it's funny. You made the joke last week of trying not to be the jinx on my matchup <laughs> bets. And uh, the good of last week, our fate of Lee Hodges missed the cut. Um, the bad Patrick Rogers played 18 holes, had to pull out of the tournament because of injury. So I'm not necessarily a hundred percent blaming you there, but you know, <laughs> I, I might appreciate if you pull your headphones out before I talk about this play and we actually get into this, but, um, Chris Kirk minus 110 over Eric Van Royen. My model seemed to believe that we have a situation here of overall safety versus a very boomer bust candidate of Van Royen. I like this a lot better than the play last week because now we have that safety built in. Like I, I talked about that play last week. I didn't know Rogers was going to pull out of the tournament, but one of the things I noted on that play is it very well might go miscut, miscut when it's all said and done, you know, miscut withdrawal is not necessarily how it was drawn up, but I, I like the safety that we get with Kirk 21st in my model for overall safety safety. You pit that against Van Royen who lands 57th. That alone puts us in about that minus 120 range of disparity in my sheet. We then get an additional five to 10 points of value when I merged in these overall ratings. Kirk 23rd overall, Van Royen 61st. I think the projections that like Van Royen are going to like it because of the distance that he adds. Like there's a little bit more optimism in the market than my model seems to think. But 83rd for me in this field for projected strokes gained around the green. 76 when reprojecting his totals on these fiery green complexes with the putter. We know about how short game acumen means so much here and the experience of knowing how to get up and down. Like, I don't see that in Van Royen's profile. I think he has a very low floor here. And uh, when we're talking about a tournament that only has, you know, sub 90 players and we're going to have to try to find volatility in different ways since the bottom of the board is littered with these amateurs and players that are over the age of 50 that are these guys that are not maybe necessarily in the prime of their careers. I'm trying to find that volatility in an area like Van Royen, who his short game is pretty much below every non-amateur in this field for me.